Log Talk Radio. Boom shakalaka. <laughs> this thing is being so weird. Oh, it's just so annoying. The the perfectionist ADD in me really just wants this to not be so weird. But look at this thing. What the fuck? This is just going to bother me for the entire duration of the show. All right, guys. Welcome. 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 What is going on? Welcome to Interview with the Man, episode 91. Ten days away. Body language mastery quarter two enrollment is going to happen. And let's see where it is right here. Boom, 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 boom. There it is. Nine days, 10 hours, 57 minutes. That's the countdown. I actually did a mistake in calculating the pre-signups. But let's take a look at the promo real quick. The Body Language Mastery Course from Modern Life Dating is coming out June 28th this month. This course is going to show you how to understand a female's body language on a date and give you the confidence to know what she is thinking and feeling just by observing her body. The course includes 40 gestures total, both positive and negative, This course will increase your closing rate by at least 10%. In addition to that, after you are signed up for the course, there will be two daily webinars for three weeks following the course for you to attend with all your questions about the course. Absolutely free, and that is a $1,000 value. And last, you will be added to a private men's-only group that will be supporting you as you educate yourself on this journey. There is limited enrollment. That's right. Enrollment will only be one time per business quarter, so you do not want to miss out. Body Language Mastery by Modern Life Dating is being released on June 28th. To learn more, go to Modern Life Dating forward slash body language. Sign up for the email waiting list and you'll automatically receive updates about the course and your chance to enroll. In order to sign up, you're going to go to right here, modernlifedating.com forward slash body language. Scroll down, click on this link right here, and then click right here and type in your email address and press this button, subscribe. Put your best email address in there. You only need to put one. Don't double sign up. And um, yeah, that's going to do it. Uh, I'm telling you, this thing is going to be huge, man. So, uh, actually, Charlie came over today from Cultivate Crypto. We had some, we had a nice little American lunch, fried up, made our own little homemade Chick Fil A sandwiches because there is no Chick Fil A in Japan. But I was able to overcome that and make some delicious Chick Fil A sandwiches. Um, a little bit of French fries and deep fried mushrooms. Man, oh man, it was a good one. And we did a little tally to figure out how many pre signups I had. Actually, I fucking was completely off. Um, I thought we had about 80 people for the pre-signups. Actually, I did a manual count through today. It's 135 people. 135 people are already are pre-signed up. You know, so that doesn't necessarily mean they'll enroll. And then I'm going on. Let me see. I'm going on 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine different shows on nine different channels. So you better fucking sign up. Serious. If you don't sign up, it's going to be some serious repercussions. Okay. Not joking. Serious as a fucking heart attack. Don't make me use this. Do not make me the bad guy. Body language mastery quarter two. Get in while you still can. Uh, it is going to be going up in price in quarter three to four hundred ninety-seven dollars, and then quarter four in five ninety-seven. And um, yeah, man, it's gonna be it's gonna be life changing. Uh, for the guys, uh, John, you booked your consultation. I'll be scheduling that soon. And then uh, uh, last night, uh, I believe it was Ron booked two consultations. New new uh, newcomer booked two consultations. Um, so we're gonna be handling handling those as well. Um, if you guys are on the fence about it, some of you guys want to. Uh, some of you guys have been hitting me up saying, "Hey, I want to book a consultation, see if body language mastery is is okay for me." Just so you know, you get three weeks worth of training with me, seven days a week. I'm gonna go hard. I'm gonna be going fucking twenty one days straight. I might I might take a day or two off, but um, you're gonna get a lot of value, a lot of question and answer value in the whole um setup regarding body language mastery. So. Um, and that, that right there is what you'll be getting. And there's plenty more where that came from. Um, but yeah, I think this one's going to be pretty, pretty insane. Um, it's definitely, the value is going to be through the roof. I'm, I'm pumped. Winston Wolf, what's up? Eric Von Whittle, what up? Eric says, John, I'm glad you don't turn off the chat. I will never turn off the chat, sir. Never, ever, ever. Uh, how's the mic sound, guys? Does it sound good? Is it is it too overbearing? I took off that little arm thing because it was just bothering me. Reps for Jesus, what's up on Instagram? Uh, I keep thinking about credit score, man. Look at this. Is this thing falling? I keep thinking about credit score, man, from yesterday. I can't get over that guy winning the girl. Yeah. Yeah. We're actually – I'm in negotiations with credit score, man, right now. Um, he He's going to come on the show. I might change the, the show time for him. And um, – he will be getting uh, on the show hopefully soon. I actually got to send him a message here. Um, I want to have that guy. I actually watched the interview with him, and uh, no guy, he's got some swagger. He actually was uh, an engineer for SpaceX, and then surprise, surprise, he switched over to sales. I'm telling you, most guys that are good at sales, if you can get laid, you can get you can get paid, and if you can get paid, you can get laid. It's always interchangeable. The guys that are sales. Look at me, man. I'm fucking smoother, smooth as butter, baby. I'm closing check. I'm I'm closing deals. I'm slashing necks and I'm cashing checks, baby. I'm a ruthless salesman. Um, and you know, I do it all ethically too. And same, you know, it doesn't shock me that the guy got into sales too. So he's he's really definitely something amazing to be <laughs> to be seen. And I knew after judging her body language, I was like, I think she fucked this dude. And then, as you guys know, um, pulled up the DMs, hit him with the DM, and he was like, Yeah, yeah, I did, I did. So. What a time to be alive, man. What a fucking – what that was good radio yesterday. That was a good show. Uh, apparently, it's over 800 views too. A lot of you guys enjoyed it. Um, Christian Martin says, uh, just signed up on the waiting list. Yeah, I saw you I saw you join in. Thank you for your email, sir. We're going to get you sorted away. Um, do you think it all was bullshit? No. No, I don't. Tommy B. Shelby, what's up, bro? You seem new here. I've never seen you talking before in the chat. Um, Vandy Barkman with the $8 Canadian super chat props to the chat here in Canada business. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Yeah. And if you guys, uh, I turn on super chat cause you know, it is what it is. Some of you guys cannot, uh, help, but donate via super chat. But if you do want to donate and make sure that the money a hundred percent goes to me cause 30% gets taken away and goes to YouTube and I don't get it until they release the funds to me and the funds have to go over a hundred dollars for them to release it to me it's really annoying uh, but thank you very much for the donation and if you want to donate uh instantaneously to me you can send to streamlabs.com forward slash modern life dating channel if you want to book a consultation with me send um just click on that link send 70 dollars, and you will be instantaneously booked for a one-on-one 
um, Skype consultation with me where we can, you know, handle whatever you need handled. It may be dating, sex, relationships, cryptocurrency, um, the whole nine yards. Uh, I, I tell you what, guys, um, and it's kind of it's kind of tied into today's lesson. But honestly, I'm about I don't know if I even should say this on the Internet, but I don't know. Like, I'm about to make a fucking killing with cryptocurrency. Um, not a million, but if things go the way I think it, definitely going to be pulling in a, a nice little chunk of change, six figures. Again, not, that's not like, you know, in the big picture, that's not a lot of money that compared to like what some people make, you know, some, some YouTubers, some internet gurus and all that, they make like a hundred grand a month. But, um, I'm, my, my plan is to to get the finances up to a pretty decent level. I actually got a great strategy. Um, you know what? Actually, let me just see if I can pull up the pull up the uh, the YouTube clip. This is a very motivational clip. And uh, let me just see if I can put it up. It's, uh, I think it's, I forget what the movie is called. Yeah, it's called, it's from the movie, The Gambler. And this is really, this is some gangster advice here. Okay, I'm actually going to play you this clip. I, hopefully, I don't get like demonetized or flagged, but uh, this part is really just friggin' awesome. Let me let me just pull up the uh, screen share here. All right, Let's see. Okay, check this out. This is how you should make all your business decisions. You get up two and a half million dollars. Any asshole in the world knows what to do. You get a house with a 25-year roof, an indestructible Jap economy shitbox. You put the rest into the system of three to five percent to pay your taxes, and that's your base. Get me? That's your fortress of fucking solitude. That puts you for the rest of your life at a level of fuck you. If somebody wants you to do something, fuck you. Boss pisses you off, fuck you. Own your house, have a couple bucks in the bank. Don't drink. That's all I have to say to anybody at any social level. Did your grandfather take risks? Yes. I guarantee he did it from a position of fuck you. A wise man's life is based around fuck you. The United States of America is based on fuck you. You're a king. You have an army. Greatest navy in the history of the world. Fuck you. Blow me. We'll fuck it up ourselves. Which we have done. Beautiful fuck you position lost forever. I don't know. Could you guys? Could you guys have? Did you guys hear that? Was it too low? Sound sound a little low on my end. Did you guys ever hear? Did you guys hear that as well? Um, my UNC been bragging about crypto for years. There you go. What up? All that Asian chicks with the freckles are amazing. Are amazing. <laughs> yeah. Judy has freckles from Body Language Mastery. My main problem is forgiving myself for effing it up with my ex, suffering from one-itis, and just feel like the guy she left me for was that much better, even though he looks like Earthworm Jim. Well, you know, she left you for him, so, you know, it could be a million things, but at the end of the day, you just sitting around beating yourself up for it is not, it's just not worth the the mental stress you're giving yourself. You guys heard it good. Everything was like it came in nice and clear. That that's what I'm working on right now is the position of fuck you. Um, and that that's what ties in today's today's lesson, right? So we're talking about you know age old question: Is learning how to date and sleep with many women worth it? Okay, there's a lot of people out there. Who want to say, oh my god, the, the juice is not worth the squeeze. And, um, you know, it's just, oi, 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 what a headache. What a headache. Um, and that's my, that's my, uh, that's my, uh, perception, okay? My point of view, all right? You know, you can't just go through life having this super, super defeatist mindset. And it really is something that it's just it's just not – I don't know. I just don't think it, – it's not a very good mindset in my opinion. Before we jump into that, uh, let's go here to – right there. Follow me on um, Twitter at Modern Life John. Got 1,192 followers. Nice and uh, – 
nice and nice and good. Ashley T- Taylor says Alex Soy Cortez thought. I thought his isn't his name Alejandro. Uh, he's just very two faced. He's he's hella two faced. Like, uh, he added me on Twitter. We were DMing each other, and then um we. We were chatting, and then I was like, hey, you want to help me promote uh, Body Language Mastery? I can make you an affiliate, blah, 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 because he has an email list of like 20,000 people. We just got done doing the Body Language episode in Redman Group at the time. And he was like, yeah, man, totally, totally, totally. And then like a week later, he like unfollowed me. And then recently, I just saw that uh, he blocked me on Twitter. And so that right there is just, is in my opinion, is just bitch assness, right? Um, I, I don't like a man that can't just be a man and like look me in the eye and sort your beef out or whatever beef i don't even know i don't know what this guy's problem is he's 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 definitely a weirdo definitely weirdo a a lot of people that i've met who've met him they've said that like you know he is actually in real life he's a he's a little bit of a weirdo um i think he was kind of a dork when he was younger and then he got some money and got some like e-fame and then now he like thinks that oh he's He's like knows something just because he has clout. A lot of these dudes think like just because they have internet clout that all of a sudden, <laughs> excuse me, they feel like you know once they have uh, internet clout that for some reason their opinion is valid. Like just because they have internet clout, and it's just certainly not the case. Just because people follow you doesn't necessarily mean everything you say has some validity to it. I mean and that's just that's just common sense right there. He has a lot of like pretty gay gestures and mannerisms too. So I don't know. He he's always like he does like these little like head things and flicks of the wrists and stuff. Like I don't know. It's whatever. I I don't even care. Anybody who decided to like side with Red Pill Judas and you know Anthony Johnson in the twenty one convention over um me, I can just say, Hey, your loyalty is to yourself and money and hey, fair play to you. Do do what you gotta do. But I don't know. Uh, he he definitely doesn't I, I mean is he a good guy probably i think he's just a little full of himself um you know he should be more more humble like me and put on a bathrobe and some sunglasses and uh talk to his audience uh let's let's catch up with the chat here thank you for the question ashley taylor um Let's see, Mark. Mark Gordon, what's up, baby? Uh, Christian, yeah, bro, you just gotta let go, man. You gotta, you gotta chill. If you want to call in right now and talk about it, uh, go ahead and give me a call. I mean, I, but really, you're you're better off just just moving on, man. Um, phone number phone number is on the screen here six five seven three eight three one three one eight. Um, definitely call in. Oh, Tokyo Sam, Tokyo, what's up, baby? Oh, Sam, baby, I love you. Sam, thank you so much for watching, man. Appreciate it Um, because you're such a big YouTuber and you're coming in here watching. I appreciate it. Sam has like over 20,000 subscribers. He's like one of the OG um, YouTubers in Tokyo. I actually met up with him and uh, we ate we ate a bunch of food. We drank a bunch of beer. Um, He's a good man. Very entertaining man. Cool guy. So thank you for watching, Sam. Uh, Mark Gord, what's up, baby? Uh, CJ OK Reek, what's up? Christopher Wilson, what up? Ch- uh, Charles Camarillo, what up? Dan, what's up? Bro, I'm catching up with yesterday's S- episode, laughing my face off at the rating video. Yeah, a lot of people actually emailed me and wrote me and, and DM'd me on Instagram and hit me up on uh, Twitter. They're like, dude, everything you did was so fucking hilarious. Like, people, people loved my comment about Thunderjaw. <laughs> Yo, that chick had a stronger jaw than fucking Tony in the chat. And Tony's got a, a very strong manly jaw. Um, homegirl, good lord. Oh my god, she was a beast. And then and then Joanna Man, the all that big beast of woman as well. Oh man. What a, what a funny. Yo, Mr. Jackson, what's up? Thanks for watching me on Twitch earlier today. Uh Sugar Mamas can get you ahead in life. Yeah, if you strategically play your game, yeah, of course. Um, let's see. MGTOWs and feminists should bang each other. Oh, Simon B., what's up, dude? Uh, Tony S. says, defeatist mindset is a beta mindset. Alphas will find a way or make one. Exactly. Did you see the latest ADG video for Tactical Soap? Uh, yeah, it's not a new – I actually gave – I'm the one who gave him the idea for that video, the Soap Me Up Baby. Uh, I think he's putting it out as like some kind of like dig at me or whatever, but he's just a weirdo. He's he's in a relationship with his sister, so forget him. 
Um, and that girl's not that cute. She's got a she got a big old belly under that shirt. Did you guys notice that? She's got fake tits, but she also got a big belly and a mountain of makeup. I mean, would I bang her? For sure, but definitely not a prized possession. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Tokyo Sam says, anybody talking shit about my good friend Johnny is getting good glass into the face. That piece of shit. If he comes into a bar, I'll give that Nancy a good kicking. Valak, good morning, gents. How goes it on this fine day? Doing well, brother. How are you? Um, the crimson chin comment made me lose it. Yeah. <laughs> Learn how to realize your own worth is more important. Mm, very good. So, yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um... We're going to talk about this, okay? And, and what you're talking about. You know, you, you're talking about, you know, dating, relationships. Is it – is learning to date and sleep with many women worth it, okay? Now, there is a, there's a type of person out there. There's a school of thought of people that just say no, right? There's guys that just say it's definitely not worth it. Um, the juice is not worth the squeeze, whatever. And this is more – this is like a more of a – a newer mentality with like, you know, like, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago, there were no incels. Like the things were not, not as weird as they are now. And a big part of the whole weirdness is happening. is just a lack, a lack of, a lack of positive masculinity, um, a lack of positive male leadership, excuse me, positive male leadership. And, a lack of fathers in the households, you know, uh, there it's just like irrefutable fact, like households are getting more divorces. Um, women are pretty much incentivized to divorce you, uh, because they got big daddy government to, you know, pay for everything, you know? And, um, you like that? I'm moving that with my foot. You know, they got big daddy government to sup to supplicate, to them so they can get on welfare or they can just like you know legally get you to pay child support they can strategically get you uh strategically get pregnant by you and then bleed you for cash so like that that's that's just you know that's just that's just the reality of of the world we live in and they they're incentivized to break up you and, and destroy the family um not all the time but you know at least 50% of the time and then the the divorce are initiated uh 75% of the time and then like you know the statistics are just there and they're they're crushingly obvious okay that both men and women all right it's better for the children to be raised in a married household rather than an unmarried household but now we're having all this trouble with masculinities because they're just kicking the man out of the house right or you know if they're not they're living in a household where the father is like under undermined um just basically a, a plow horse you know or just completely disrespected by the mother and then the guy just kind of stays because he's just kind of they're miserable right and and doing you know launching this channel having the channel blow up recently um it, i gotta say man it, it is it is um you know it's kind of shocking how bad the average guy is with women these days and that's why i wanted to do yesterday's video uh just to give you guys a, a glimpse of hope because that is your competition and then our boy credit you know our boy credit score man with the fucking with the, with the hard the hard credit score pickup line you know saying to to homegirl you know what's your credit score having her prove herself right off the bat you know that right there is a good indicator of like even even he can get that kind of girl and that girl definitely not super super hot but definitely not not a bad wouldn't be a bad time you know what i mean uh david says hot your volume goes up drastically every once in a while for around a second really it's it's this mic it's just i'm moving back and forth as well i don't have the i don't have the net that's what it is that little net thing i just took it off because it was bothering me um is it does it sound that bad let me know i'm about to get one of those badass xlr cable mics it just gotta gotta wait for it to come in 
gotta wait for it to come in. Um, but yeah, and that's that's what I think. That's that's what's trouble. Um, and very interesting point here. Flowmaster says incels only exist in westernized culture. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. I think there is. Uh, I I think there is a little bit of incel stuff in 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 Japan and stuff. Um, in Korea for sure, but not not as big and as outspoken as it is in the states. Uh, there's clearly a problem in the states with with masculinity, and, and there's a and, and a, a problem with the sexes. Like you know, I I chill in Japan. Obviously, I'm in Japan, right? And you know, I when I when I when I like go out with people in Japan, like. If there's girls and guys, like everybody gets along. Like men and women get along over here. Uh, there's no like rivalry. There's no like like girls in Japan. Like they don't throw shade or they don't like try to step up and like challenge guys. Like they're very ladylike, and it's it's men are men and women are women, and like that's just normal stuff. Um, yeah, it just seems to be a West specific uh pro problem, and um. Really, it, it is. It's definitely. It's definitely troubling. But at the same time, if you follow my guidance, you do the big three: make money, make muscles, learn game. If you can knock those three out, I mean, then right there, you're 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 doing better than uh, 90 percent of the guys out there. Because the majority of guys are just terrible with women. Majority of guys are absolutely terrible with women. Majority of guys are, you know, they don't take care of themselves in the gym. They don't take care of themselves financially. They don't take care of their grooming, right? They don't they don't learn game. You know, they work they look at porn, they jerk off, and I'm telling you, once you have game, okay? Once you understand the woman thing. And the woman thing to understand it, yeah, it is it's it's definitely tough to do. Okay, I'm not going to lie to you. It takes a lot of practice, okay? To get as good as me, it takes it takes years. All right? However, all right? You could get relative success in 3 months. Consistent success in 6 months. After a year, you're going to become a high-level player. After 2 years, you're going to be very very good. And then anywhere between 3 to 5 years, that's when you start to burn out and you're just like, "Okay, you know, this isn't for me." And, and that's why I ultimately I do this channel is because, again, as I said before, the reason for this channel is so you guys, you know, you can learn the game, you can learn it, and then move on with your life. And that's exactly what I did. Like, I don't I don't need to go and, like, I, I, the thought of even going – like, I went to a club the other night just because I was rolling with the, you know, the, the, the bread wallet president. But, like – just like the fact, like the thought of like suiting up and and getting all fresh to go out to a club just to pick up girls. Nowadays, I'm just like, man, no, 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 no. This is I have, a, I have an audio problem. Charlie, how's how's my mic? Is my mic messed up? Do I sound bad, Charlie? Let me know. I'm getting I'm getting some people saying it doesn't work. Some people saying it does. I don't know. Audio through my phone isn't bad. When I have my headphones on, there's a distinct volume increase. Not a big deal. Charlie, let me know. Um, but yeah, you know, so there's clearly um, – there's clearly benefits in my opinion to, to getting this part of your life completely handled, okay? Now, if it's um, – if it's something you want to handle and you're going to leave it unchecked, okay? Because let, let's jump right into this topic, right? So let's say you are unhappy with your dating life, right? Thank you, Andy. Um, let's say you're unhappy with your, your dating life. Volume jumps every once in a while. Seems not too bad. Yeah, I thought it was my headphones too. I get that too. It is a weird – it has a weird gain left to right. It's – let me see this. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. This microphone's being weird. Um, 
Maybe it has something to do with this connectivity here. Ah, oh, that's probably what it is. Oh. I don't know. Let's see. All right, cool. Yeah, it's just probably me. Manip this cord is getting manipulated a little bit. That's what it is. Um, but anyways, yeah. Thank you for the feedback, guys. So, you know, here's the bottom line. Okay? Here's the bottom line. Now, if you want to get your dating life sorted out, okay, if you want to, if you want to get your dating life sorted out, that's the big thing. If you don't want to sort it out, that's fine. My show isn't for you in regards to the dating aspect. We still have the modern life, you know, modern technology, life, fitness, health, you know, finances, those different things that are part of my brand, those can help you out. But if you do want to get your dating life sorted out and you neglect it, that's when you start getting into a very bad habit of of neglecting yourself, okay? Of neglecting your needs and of uh, procrastinating, okay? And that's a really bad thing, okay? If there's something you're unhappy with in your life and you don't take action to fix it as a man, then it's going to be a very problematic thing because you're going to be living with this this sort of unhappiness in your life. Don't come on camera. Go over there. Thank you. <laughs> um, but, you know, <clears throat> the, the point I'm trying to make is if there's something you're unhappy with in your life and you just get used to eating shit, okay, you just get used to tolerating it, then – what is going to happen is you're just going to consistently always be okay with things not being okay. You see, what I did when I came to Japan, I came to Japan because I wasn't happy with my life in um, Orlando, okay? W my life wasn't bad. My life was fucking great. It was great. Um, oh, great. Everything was great on paper. Like, I had my own place. Uh, I had my own little business going. I had a um, great job working for a, a Fortune 500 company and um, had girls. You know, everything was, was good to go. But I knew that there was better out there. I knew that I could achieve more financially. And I knew that I could, I, to be quite frank with you, I knew that I could get higher quality women abroad as well. I had done my research. I was not stupid. Um, and at this time, the world, the girls weren't really bad. The girls started to get really bad in the United States after the uh, during the second term of the Obama administration. Uh, there was a lot of of uh, there was a lot of you know there was a lot of SJW propaganda that pushed, and it really really divided America, in my opinion. Um, but I just still knew that there were better better women abroad. Right. Or, and not even that, but just like I could experience the quality as well. And, I, and I, honestly, I was really financially and spiritually driven because, you guys know, I, I wanted to go out uh, to Japan as my rite of passage. So when you get used to. How can I say this? It starts with a C. What's the word? When you get complacent, right, when you get complacent in life. Um, then, you know, it, it, it's a very, it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing for men. Not a good thing at all. Uh, Ian Kramer, very good point. 2006 to 2011 was the best. I would, I would have to agree. I left in 2012 and I would have to agree. I remember I used to hook up with my, my chemistry tutor. God damn, she was so fine. Sexy white girl, big tits. Good Lord. I would hook up with her and then I would go teach this other chick that I was hitting on. With what she taught me, you know, just just keeping that, keeping that, <laughs> keeping that sexual economy flowing. Um, Ian Kramer says, or no, sorry, no, not Ian Kramer. So, uh, X Spencer X says, let's talk crypto, 
Money first, women second. Uh, to come over tomorrow, Wednesday, Tokyo Crypto Show. That's that's for you. We're gonna we go into it uh, big time. Talk about what's going on portfolio wise. Where's where's the price of Bitcoin heading and everything. Um, that's that's the place for that. Vandy says, "Damn it, MLD. I was just thinking about skipping the gym and getting some rest. Now you talk about procrastination. Off to the gym now. And then that's funny because let me tell you something. Anytime you guys force yourself to go to the gym and then you don't." feel like doing it tell me do you ever regret it after you go i guarantee you don't you always feel good after uh tom tumble says where is credit score man credit score man lives in california so right now it's actually 7 38 a.m in california most people in america don't wake up that early that's just the bottom line and the show starts at 6 a.m cali time so he said hey that's just really early for me can we shift the show so i'm actually in the in the um i'm actually in the process of uh, getting him on the show it's just going to take some time to, to line up our schedules i might make a special time um i'll be sending out an email and everything i'll post it out. i'll post it on all social media just make sure you have me you know facebook twitter instagram whichever one you decide to follow me on and i'll put out the notifications there muhammad what's up muhammad says, says apologies i'm late bk what's up baby uh let's see there's a gender war going on in, right now in the west says dr phil yep Stuck at work. If you've li if you've live Thursday, I'll be able to call in. I just need to man up. Her leaving me for someone in the military just makes me feel like a bitch. It is good, you know. It's t take time to grieve, but then you know eventually you got to just give it up. Let me scroll back up here. Valix says I'm doing good, bro. Just finished another badass workout to get the day started. Awesome, beautiful. CJ says that wide receiver chick would tackle the guy at the slightest whiff of an argument. Ugh. She's got a jaw on her too, man. If she tucks her chin, it's going to be almost impossible for me to choke her out. Uh, and even if the fathers are their baby booners are extremely beta. Yeah, that's true. Um, I blame the way we were raised. First, I started learning about the red pill when I was seriously I was seriously denying it at first. That's Spencer. Yep. Your video yesterday showed me that the competition is so low, I didn't even realize it. Yeah. And once you if you get in my body language course, you'll see that not only is there no competition, but you'll realize how many women are actually interested in you cuz chances are if you're watching this, your your body language skills aren't as good as mine in regards to understanding if a woman is attracted to you or not unless you're into my course. And the guys who got into my course, it was a huge confidence booster for a lot of these guys. Like, you know, you get the you get like you get like this sense of authority when you get into the, get this type of information in your head. And I got to say that it is the ultimate red pill because you cannot unsee this stuff. There is no going back. Once you start studying body language and seeing all this shit, man, you there's no unseeing it. You learn it forever. Like I saw yesterday when I was watching that Angela chick and her gestures and her mannerisms to her reaction to Sean and I was like, Oh, motherfucker. I think she fucked this dude. And what happened? Hit up Sean on Instagram DMs, credit, a.k.a. credit score man. I was like, hey, bro, did you smash, dude? And he was like, yeah, bro, I did. <laughs> like like a real fucking G. Like a fucking G. So I'm telling you, it, it, it's like a superpower, bro. I mean, you have authority over other men. You have authority over other people. You literally have, like, godlike powers. Um, and I, I thought everybody knew this. It's crazy. I had no idea that people were this fucking clueless. Um, like I said, the enrollments for quarter one alone were crazy. We had 140 enrollments for quarter one. So I think people are catching on, though, because I had 140 on quarter one. I have 135 now just in pre-signups. So I think quarter this quarter two one is going to be huge. Um, yeah, let me go back to the chat here. What up, Ernie? Uh, let's see. Oh, a Angelo, what's up, bro? Angelo Ocasio says, uh, oh, wait, AJ says it's here early in Cali, but well worth it turning in, tuning into the show. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Angelo Ocasio says, dude, the episode from yesterday was by far my favorite from the quagmire bitch <laughs> to the credit score guy getting the draws. Couldn't stop laughing. Oh my God. It's so funny. Oh, uh, what's up, Bull Rush? Some of these chicks are just plain nasty when you try to be friendly to them. They have a chip on their shoulder. Yes, that's very true. And that's just part of, you know, that's just part of the game. 
You just gotta walk. You just gotta walk away. It is what it is. Uh, Judas is shaking on the red pill. Yeah, he is. When they pull their hair to one side and show me their neck, I go in. Bingo. There you go, Ian. You know it. Very good. Judas is choking on the red pill. Yeah, yeah, he is. So let's go back to this, right? So what I what I say is like this, okay? Because you got to realize this too, man. I, I did not even realize this, but the average guy is so desperate. He's so fucking desperate for for vagina that he will he will absolutely um he will absolutely do the most terrible things decision wise for himself just to get some vagina okay he will forsake himself he will forsake his friends he'll forsake his hobbies he'll forsake Tons of things just to get some vagina, right? Because they don't have the abundance mentality, okay? Because they don't have the skill. When you get, like, when you get the skill, like, okay, let, let's see who's in the chat. Okay, perfect. Muhammad, like, Muhammad is a, is a super player right now. I think he's dating a former Miss Argentina or something, right? So when you get this level of, when you get your game sorted out, what is going to happen is this, Okay. First, okay, let's talk. Let's say you're just complete, complete uh, incel and you get under my coaching, right? Let's say it takes me three months to unfuck your brain, right? You do coaching twice a month. You tune into the show. You call in. You pay attention everything, right? Um, let's say it takes three months to get you unfucked. And then let's say it takes another two months to get you uh, on the, out in the field talking to girls, um, meeting girls and going on dates, right? Let's say you had high anxiety before or you're just clueless or you didn't know about your fashion or whatever, right? Let's say it messes with you. And then let's say by the, let's say so that's five months, right? And then like two two months of extreme dating, dating apps, going on dates, meeting some psychos because that's part of the game, bro. I've met some fucking crazies in my life, bro. I Like what people don't realize is like when you're a dater or like when you're a womanizer pimp or whatever, like you're going to meet some girls that are young and cute, but those girls are going to be future cat ladies. Like you just don't see it now because she's young, but down the road, she is going to be a super crazy cat lady, right? So you go on some day, you get some experience under your belt. Let's say at the end of year one, now you've got you're a certified player. You're like, okay, I can go on a date, I can get I can I can get a girl to have sex with me, and like I get her I get her attracted to me. You've been going to the gym, you've getting your finances in order, about a year, right? Then you enter what I call the red pill gluttony phase, which is anywhere between three to five years when you're just like running through girls, running through girls. I, I have a guy that I was coaching. He lives in uh, Dubai. He's an Australian guy. He works for like this top security company. Makes fucking bank. Okay, like up. I wouldn't say upper. Like you know, around four four hundred thousand dollars a year, right? Thirty six stud killer, right? And he had one session with me. He's a very smart guy. He had one session with me. I set him straight, and the guy is just like. He's getting so much sex as you know what to do with himself, right? And so then the next thing is after you get your dating sorted out, right? You're going to eventually to an extent get bored with girls, right? For me, these days, if I'm, I'm 33, right? And if I'm not having sex on the first date, you've got to be ultra ultra hot ultra hot ultra attractive for me to want to go on a second date because the second date is probably not going to happen date three yeah all <laughs> right yeah right no sir re bob no thank you it is not going to happen this is not going to happen i'm burnt out in regards to like actually caring Right. For when a couple like, okay, I'm 33 now. I would say like five years ago, I, I've been, I've been a player. I've been living, living the good life for a while now. 
Um, but I've been, I've had, I would say I concretely had like top 5% game in the world from about 27 years old. So that's when I was just like, just getting tons and tons and tons and tons of high quality ass. Right. Now I've, I, I started to get burned out around like, eh, around like 30 ish. 30, yeah, about about 30, 30, 31 ish. And I was just like, I just want to get money. I just want to get paid now. And that's my new obsession, right? I used to stress and make plans to like go out, go out with like uh super, super hot girls and to kind of get, you know, a little nervous or like on the date, you're like, you know, fuck, I kind of want this to work. I kind of want this to happen. Um, now, I get nervous and shit like that when I go out with millionaires. Like when I'm like talking to CEOs of companies, CTOs, CFOs, and like I'm picking those guys' brains because now I just decided like I already got the woman thing figured out. I just want to get the fucking money now. I'm scratching my hands, my hands. This is all. If you know what that means, scratching your hands. Um, you know that that's the new thing for me. Is like I want to get paid. And if I had never. If I had never decided to take time out of my life and to get my dating life sorted out, okay, I literally, I objectively looked at it, okay? I looked at it like a scientist. I said, hey, I'm not necessarily 100% happy with my level of game, right? This was like when I was early 20s, like 23, 24. Like, you know, I was getting ass and stuff. It was like, I was never like an incel. I never, I've, I had, I've, been, I've been good with girls pretty much my whole life, right? Even in the church when I was hooking up with chicks, all right? I remember I got caught sucking on these big old titties up in the fucking next to the choir room in the church. Got caught by one of the custodians. I remember her name is Jessica. She was redhead. Big, great tits. Great tits. Oh, my God. I was baptized by fire with those tits. Um, so I was never like completely incel or – I was actually never completely – I was never an incel. Um – but I knew there was just a level of proficiency that I wanted to obtain, and that I, that's what I was studying and, and, and heading towards. And then once I got that figured out, you know, I realized to myself, like, oh, my God. If I can get my dating life sorted out like this, then you start looking at other parts of your life. And you're like, you know what? What if I – what if I just decide to handle the finances and 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 you know go after what I want? And so before I used to have like a little uh it was a little Craigslist based business, nothing crazy, but you know, I was I'm proud of myself. I was like twenty two when I started it, and I did it from like twenty two to twenty six. And basically I would get stuff off of Craigslist, mainly sofas. I would clean them and then and put them right back on Craigslist and sell them. And I would charge people like a delivery fee and you know, all you had to do was – I was like the, basically the Uber Eats of sofas. Like you would look at a sofa on my little advertisement at Craigslist. You would text me I would, and you'd be like, hey, yeah, do you want me to deliver it? Sure. And then I would go load it up in my truck and then deliver it to you. And I was like, you know, making money off of it. Not Nothing crazy, but like, you know, I was a young kid. So I was making like anywhere between five and five hundred to two thousand dollars extra a month flipping stuff on Craigslist, right? I've always been a little hustler and, um, you know, I was hustling and it was, it was good, clean work too. I would do, it was mattresses and sofas. All I would do is pick it up from the free section, clean it, steam, clean it, whatever, and then just resell it. So I had that going and my, my thing was like, well, you know, I'm really getting tired of like having to do all this leg work and drive and all that stuff. And I was like, I think that because if I sell somebody a sofa, they are not going to need another sofa for what at least at least a year i don't even know who's upgrading their sofas every year like ideally like you know one to three years right five years for some people so i was thinking to myself i could sell a sofa for anywhere to 100 to 300 dollars at a time or i could go to japan and sell one english lesson for 30 dollars an hour but they're coming back the next uh the next week and they're going to keep coming back because once you need the English lessons monthly, it's an ongoing uh, – it's a subscription-based payment model basically. And that's what I was thinking. And then not only that, all I need is five students a day, five hours for $150 an hour. 
or $150 a day. That was my mentality at the time because that was a lot of money to me back then. Now $150 is like, man, it's drinking money. <laughs> it's Outback Steakhouse money. I love going out back in Tokyo. I, I, it's like just, just fully embracing the white trash in me. Just like, yeah, baby, we're going out. We're going to fucking Outback. Um, <laughs> I love Outback. I don't care. It's fucking delicious. Um, but that, that was my mentality. And the reason I thought what I was like, you know, once you, once you start setting goals and accomplishing them, right, you get your dating life sorted out and then you start thinking you have more confidence, right? What is more confidence for a man than being able to sleep with tons of beautiful women? Like for me, I personally enjoy that. I do. And again, maybe you don't enjoy it, but me personally, I enjoy having sex. I enjoy having sex with a lot of hot, beautiful young women. That is just my thing. And the power just to do it is it's very nice. It's very nice. It's like going to a buffet and be like, hey, I can have some chicken. I can have some steak. I can have chicken and steak in the same fucking day. And hey, you know what? There's a nice brownie over there. I can have that too. That's what having your dating life sorted out is like. Just knowing that you have the option. Okay? And that's a big part of it is the validation right? You're having sex with tons of girls, not necessarily going to make you super happy. Will it make you happy for a while? I think so. If you, especially if you had trouble, if you're having trouble with women and then you're like, okay, I suck. Like I need to figure out my dating. Yes. Then moving forward, it's going to bring you uh, temporary fulfillment. You're going to be like, yeah, I'm the fucking man. And let me tell you something. To be honest with you, it's nice. It, it Honestly, it, it strokes your ego. I remember going into, um, Multiple times walking into to networking events, parties, uh, house parties and stuff. Never clubs, but like – because clubs is just fucking super hard mode. But I remember walking into events and clubs and house parties – or not clubs, uh, bars, house parties and scoping the hottest girl, walking up to her, you know, spitting my fire-ass game and leaving with her. And then your friends are hitting you up. They're texting, oh, my God, did you take that girl home, bro? Oh, my God, you fucking her? I'm like, yeah, it was fucking awesome. And the next day, they're, like, giving you daps and stuff. They're like, yo, you're the fucking man. Yo, teach us, dude. And, and, and tell you honest, like, you know, some people be like, oh, bro, that's fucking, that's fucking low. That's petty, bro. But let me tell you something, bro. I got to say, I liked it. I liked the ego boost. I liked the fulfillment. It made me feel cool. And that is something that I valued. The point I'm trying to make is that if it's something that you want to do, you should do it and that there are rewards to it. Will it bring you long-term happiness? Ultimately, I don't think so. But I compare it to a man who is hungry, okay? Now, let's say there's a man that's hungry, right? And every day you have to wait for somebody to come bring you some fish, right? So you got to sit there. You got to hope for the fish person to come. You got to hope that the fish is good quality. And you got to hope that, you know, that this person will eventually keep coming and giving you this fish. Right. And that's what a lot of guys do when they get into relationships. The fish is like is like the girl giving you some pussy. You know, they're a slave to her distribution of sex. Compared to learning how to get sex on your own. And that's like teaching a man to fish. Okay? When you teach a man to fish, he is completely self-reliant. He can decide, hey, today I want to catch three fish. You know, today I want to catch ten fish. Today I want to eat a red fish, a blue fish, and a yellow fish. He knows how to catch them. He knows how to put the bait. He knows how to, um, you know, release them back into the wild when he needs to. That's that's what learning how to date is like. Okay, you have power. You have authority over your own life. Compared to being a slave to somebody who um who has to distribute it to you, right? That's why a lot of these guys get into relationships they didn't want. That's why a lot of guys get in to, get into uh they have sex with um, 100% on the girl's terms. And this kind of stuff is can be detrimental because guys will make a lot of bad decisions. But when you learn how to – and another thing is this too. Once you learn how to date, 
and let uh, date a bunch of women, then you can actually a figure out what you like, b more importantly figure out what you don't like, and then c go and get it. Okay, a lot of guys hit me up to like, oh, I'm looking for a relationship. I'm looking for something long term. It doesn't work like that. You got to go out and date a bunch of girls. Okay. And what ends up happening is I like they like to say is the cream rises to the top. I got a I got a girl now, right? And she met me in some of the in the peak of my hoeing in Osaka, right? I just I thought she was a slut. So I was just like, cause she she's you know, she highlights her hair. I just thought like she was a party girl. Turns out completely opposite. Um I remember I was just I had like three or four girls I was dating at the time, um, and then you know a couple stragglers here and there, and um, I just laid down my charm on her too. I was like, "Oh, what's up, girl? Like, you know, let, let's let's fucking go out. I'm fucking hot, dude. I know you want me. Let's do this." And uh, she was all about it. But then I started to realize, like, "Oh shit, she's actually like a good person." And I didn't even go out. I didn't even meet her like going out, like you know, like manho. And I I met her because. She was a secretary at my job. She was my secretary. And um, so I was just like, you know, I couldn't, I just like, it just naturally happened and through me living my life. And what was I doing? I was, you know, in the gym. I took this job because it was my side hustle just to get some extra money because I was making muscle. I was making money and I was learning game and I already knew game, but you know, I was implementing, the, I was implementing the game. You feel me? So that is how you should go about getting a girlfriend ideally you see when you come to a relationship with a girl you see the thing is this the best situation is like this you just try to fuck girls and the girls will decide like that they want to stay with you right they'll be like you know you're hooking up with her you're having a good time she's totally complacent uh, she's totally compliant she's coming over you know she's bringing a bottle of wine she she's giving to the relationship as well right it's a big thing and then she'll start being the girl. If she likes you, she will start pushing for a relationship. She's like, "What are we? Am I your girlfriend?" Or that's her trying to lock you down. It's happened to me tons of time, tons of times. My boy, my old boy Baver, uh, uh, Baver, my my old boy Beaver, the guy that I learned a lot of game from in university. Um, he would tell me all the time. He's like, "Yeah, just fake date, just fake date. Yeah, baby, yes." Um. Oh, Christian, Tom Bobadil is back. He says, fornicating for self-development still leads to hell. If you die during the process, you go to hell. Well, thank you for the kind and lovely words, sir. Um, <laughs> oh, Lord. Just just, uh, just send me another $100 and I'll convert to Jesus right now. I think that is what the Lord wants you to do. I'll put the link in the chat. Go ahead and just click on that link right there, my friend. And I will convert. Once again, I'll repent for my sins live on the air. Um, that is the best thing we can do there, sir. Help me. To sa help save me from fornication. But that is what I learned during this whole process, right? So. What it does, it ends up. It just gives you the, the it gives you the, the ability to choose a woman of your liking. Okay, that's really what it is. Compared to, let's say you don't. Okay, let's say you don't learn game or you don't. You just decide hey, I'm just gonna just gonna live my life, right? The thing is, once you once that happens, you go through. Uh, life and just kind of let things, you know, hold you down or just kind of let things come as they may, right? Um, you know, you just kind of just, you take up a passive approach to life. What happens is you could get tricked by uh, bad women, okay? You could get tricked by a woman that has mental diseases and you don't even know about it because you have no experience, okay? And these days and age, these day and age, you know, I'm not saying that the world's like a crazy, terrible place, but, you know, you you could end up settling for less. And and not everybody's like me. 
not everybody is driven and motivated as fuck like I am. I'm, I'm a very rare case. I'm extremely driven. I'm extremely competitive, extremely driven man, right? And me learning to get part of my, my dating life sorted out led to other things, right? That's why I had the balls to quit my corporate job. I said, you know, I figured out this dating thing. I've done all these other different businesses. In 2018, I had a goal, very simple goal. I said, I just want to live a life where I can go to sleep when I want to go to sleep and wake up when I want to wake up. And that's the life I have now. There are no time constraints on me other than consultations and this show, which is fine. This is my choice. I love doing this show. Um, and, and me learning how to uh, get my dating life sorted out led to this. And it led to me getting confidence in other areas, starting businesses, learning how to market myself correctly on the dating field, taught me how, taught me uh, uh, crucial aspects of marketing that I've applied to other businesses that I work with. Um, so there are there are multiple benefits to learning how to date, learning how to get uh, you know getting your dating life sorted out, and. In my opinion, you know, is it worth it? Yes. If you want to live the highest quality life possible, yes. Okay. And it doesn't necessarily mean that um, you need to go have sex with so many women. I happened to do it because I just liked it, right? It was a good time. Still is. Um, but it's better just to have this tool in your tool chest than to not have it because then you're just a slave to the whims of another person okay then you're just a slave to, to reality you're just slave to uh, the outcomes of your lack of understanding of the dating really um and and it's not a good thing and a lot of people get caught up in in uh in bad relationships and they just stay cuz they don't know anything's better and real quick guys there are 70 people watching right now um and 37 likes please kindly click the like button this boosts me in the youtube algorithm um if you want me to stop fornicating please send $100 to the streamlabs.com forward slash modern life dating right there uh or actually, I'll stop fornicating for fifty dollars. I will not fornicate for fifty dollars. Fifty dollars gets you fifty minutes of non-fornication. Thank you very much for your kindness. Let's go back to the chat here and, and see what's going on. Um, Muhammad. Muhammad says, "Yes, sir. I'm dating Miss Argentina, a Russian yoga instructor, a Russian supermodel, uh, a Belarusian, an Indonesian flight attendant." And an English fitness coach. See, that's nice. It's nice to have that. It's nice to have. Will Muhammad settle down? I think a soft yes. Like he might settle down, have one, and then have you know one main girl, like the Red Queen, one main girl, and then a bunch of side girls. Uh, that's usually the path. But he just got out of a bad relationship. The girl was giving him shit. Muhammad's a fucking gangster. He's making all this balling ass money. He's, he's a you know he's uh he's driving the car of his dreams. He's like living the fucking dream, and he. He's living life on his terms. That's the best way to live life. You don't want to be living life a slave to other, any other man or any other person. You want to be living life as much on your terms as possible. That's the most fulfilling way to live life, in my opinion. Living, living life on your terms. Mohammed, the halal pimp. <laughs> That's what he's saying. Inshallah, says Ben Muz. Red modern lifestyle. What's up, bro? Hello, gentlemen. He says... The white doctor feels his downside of male promiscuity. You contribute to the hookup culture and ruin women along the way. Then complain about the lack of good girls when you want to settle down. I don't uh I don't agree with that, sir. Because here there's there's flaw in your logic, okay? And no offense to you. Uh I say this with with the utmost respect. Did I kick this camera out of frame again? I think I did. Oops. My long orangutan feet are kicking. Kicking. Let me fix that. Well, my good, my long toes and look, strong legs are good for something. There we go. All right, cool. So, um, I, I disagree with you, the doctor, uh, the white doctor, uh, Phil, and this is why. So, you're not 
contributing to male promiscuity, okay, or to, to the, uh, you're not contributing to the hookup culture and ruin women. The thing is this. These girls that are interested in you, that are on the dating apps, right, that are on Tinder, on Bumble, okay, they've already made up their mind. These girls that go to the bar, put on makeup, put on tight-ass bra, push-up bra, heels, skin-tight fucking jeans, they already made up their mind that they want to go out and get fucked, okay? A lot, there's a lot of sex going around. You just have to ask yourself, do you want to partake in it and have your part of the fun? Okay, because guess what? If she doesn't fuck you, she's going to fuck somebody else, okay? That cheating wife that's interested in you, which I don't definitely don't recommend you banging wives, but the reality is that cheating wife, that cheating girlfriend, if she doesn't have sex with you, guess what? You're not that special. She will go find another guy to sleep with. Okay, because she's already made up the choice of her. It, it's already been made up in her mind, so you're not contributing to it at all. Evan APW says, "Did you fuck the model on the body language video?" <laughs> no, I didn't. I did not. She has a boyfriend, and uh, I didn't want to fuck the business relation up because it, it just it would make things weird. Um, Muhammad says, "Ruined women. They are adults. They agreed to get to this. Ah, here you go. Their decision, their results." Christian Soto for the fifty dollars, <laughs> Christian. Thank you very much. Christian with the $50 donation right there. Can I see that? Or that? $50 donation. Thank you very much. I will stop fornicating for the next 50 minutes. Promise. Thank you very much for the donation, sir. Um, Christian, are you getting into body language mastery? Did you get in? You need to get in, bro. I like you. You're a cool guy. You hella support he was the only guy that sent me donation when i was on vacation in vietnam which i was like i remember woke up it was like 10 bucks i was like god damn this guy's the man thank you very much every guy all you guys seriously thank you so much for the donations um every little bit counts it's like i'm not i'm not blowing the money either like i'm, I'm really reinvesting as you can see i reinvested you can't see it i bought a nice uh i bought a nice new desk from ikea um, that I was able to mount the mic on and mount this uh, the new cameras, and I bought I bought a ring light. You can see it right here in my glasses. The ring light was a hundred dollars, uh, but I am reinvesting uh, into the show. Still gotta get the restream set up. Uh, I've been really focusing on just. But I've been blown away with a lot, of, a lot of consultations actually. But yeah, if you guys want to donate right there, streamlabs.com uh, forward slash Modern Life Dating Channel. Please kindly donate. Um, thank you so much. Let's go back to the chat here, uh, Mr. Bread Modern. Lifestyle says, I can agree a very good friend is now with 33 – a good friend is now 33 with over 150 different girls. But he said, it's no difference whether he banged 50 or 100 does feel the same. Interesting. Mr. Superman rocks. Uh, Date two, threesome. Date three, foursome. This is just the I will save the, the world Tradcon mentality. You're not saving shit, mate. It's going to take a big, big, big change. And honestly, you're just more – it's better for you just to it, – really, it's kind of a cop-out. Now, do you – like the thing is it, it's all about do you want to do it. If you want to do it, then do it. If you don't want to do it, I'm not here to twist your hand. I'm just saying if you want the keys to the sexual kingdom, I can give them to you. If you don't want them – that's fine. You don't need to do it. I mean, there are there are, there's tons of other things you could do in your life. Uh, this is capitalism. This is this is you know just I offer a service, and if you want it, take it. If you don't, that's all good. It's all good with me. If you think I'm a bad guy, more power to you. If you think I'm awesome, you're right. So I mean, there is no there is no uh, right or wrong answer here, in regards to, you know, is learning to date and sleep with women. Uh, worth it. Do I think it's worth it? Absolutely. Do I think it raises the quality of your life? Absolutely. Do I think it, it puts confidence in you to try new things? Absolutely. 150,000%. Um, you ruined future cat lady, says Tom Tumble. That's funny. Um, let's see. Look at Rush V. He's a cautionary tale. Well, yeah, because he... I, I don't think so. I, I think that... Because I know players now that are in their 40s and happy. Uh, I think he fucked up. Roosh, listen, guys, you have to realize this. You guys can't see it. Roosh is a weird guy. 
He's a fucking weird guy. Look into his eyes. Look at the way he looks. He's not like a normal dude. He's not fucking normal. He, there's something off about him, okay? There's something kind of eerily creepy about him. If you can't see that, then you have, to, you have to raise your social intelligence. There's something weird with him, okay? And that's why he's alone. That's why he's having like this mental Christ breakdown or shit, whatever. I think the difference between me and Roosh is like I was heavily involved in church when I was young. And then I came to realize, in my opinion, that that was just not true. The whole the whole Christianity and like I literally believed I, I walked around living in fear like the rapture was going to happen any moment. For you guys who don't know what the rapture is. The rapture is like when, because you know, in the book of Revelations in the Bible, it says that Jesus is going to come back instantly, and all of the true believers will just disappear. You'll just disappear, and you'll be transported into heaven, and then the beast will come, and he'll kill all the people on earth and take them to hell, and the people who did not like they'll get the mark of the beast, and then, you know, the mark of the beast is going to put on your hand, your forehead, and then. And those who don't take the mark of the beast will be cut. They're, they'll be beheaded, right? So I believe, I truly, in my heart of hearts, I really believed that this was going to happen. I I really believed that uh, the the rapture was coming, and I believe that I had to constantly be like walking around in fear and asking God for repentance, right? I I really really believed that. Then I went to college and I got education and I started seeing some real life stuff. And then I had like this kind of this death of like my belief uh, of God. And it was very hard for me. It was very hard. I, I actually, I got super depressed. I was like 20, 22, right? And I was just like, fuck, once you die, it's over forever and like shit. And then like, you know, and then I was also like, I was in college and like, you know, I got accepted to fraternity. I was rushing for Theta Chi. And um, I, I did it. I, I quit. I dropped out. I didn't want to do that shit. Um, big, big mistake, though. A big regret of mine. I wish I stayed in. But I was like rushing for Taya Kai. And I was just like, you know, tons of girls. And it was a good old. It was a good time. Um, but, you know, then I realized that was that, you know, the whole religion thing really wasn't really real. And I think Roosh did it opposite. He didn't really grow up into church and stuff. And now... I think I think as we get older and we get more closer to death, you know, that big black darkness is coming for all of us. And if you really think about it, it can be very sobering and very, very scary, right? And then very sad too. And, you know, I think it was somebody – I forget who said it. I think it was John Lennon. He said um, the cure for death is religion. And I think Roosh is having some sort of midlife crisis right now. You know, he got all the money. He got all the women. Or or he claims to. I don't know. I don't know about that. But, you know, he's still – he's dealing with this this death thing. And I think that that's all he's doing. He's like he decided to turn to religion. He turned to Christianity too. What if Roosh was from the Middle East? Would he have turned to Allah? Right? What if he was from India? Would he have turned to Vishnu or Krishna? Or one of the whatever Shiva, one of the million fucking gods they have over in India, right? Think about it. Think about it concretely, logically. That's why I think he's having this whole breakdown. Because if he was really a Christian and really cared about this stuff, he would delete his website, according to the scripture. He would delete his website. He would delete all his books, and he would completely stop this because he's still producing ways for men to fornicate and whatnot. You know what I mean? So that. It, it, there's holes in his, his whole recent coming to God, taking the God pill, if you will, right? So that is is something that I think is is you know something that is very worth analyzing and looking at. Um, let me go back to the chat here. Vincent Vale, what's up? Uh, reoccurring income, G smart, yes, exactly. <laughs> Uh, Callie says, yes, 50% of children don't live with their father, but trad cons want to blame us players. Yeah, exactly. After the God pill, Roosh will go terrorist pill. Oh, my God. Don't say that. <laughs> the terrorist pill. Oh, Lord in heaven. The only women that get ruined are the ones that want to be ruined. True story. Does Lexington Queen in Rapungi still exist? I don't think so. 
MLD, what's your review of Ikinari Steak? I am a platinum card member of Ikinari Steak in Tokyo. There are only 24,000 people in Japan that have a platinum uh, membership card. And I'm one of them. There are 127 million people in Japan. Only 24,000 have a platinum Ikinari Steak card. I am one of them. In order to acquire a platinum Ikinari Steak card, you have to eat 20 kilograms of steak uh, and accumulate it on your point card. And I have done that. I'm, at, I'm currently at like 24 kilograms right now. It took me about a year to get the card. Uh, but I love that restaurant. Me and Charlie, that's like where some of our deepest uh, conversations were held about cryptocurrency because our office, there was an Ikinari steak right there. And we would always just go from the office to Ikinari steak, have an hour lunch, talk, count our crypto profits. And man, it was a good time. So no, I fucking love Ikinari steak. I went there with the bread wallet president the other day. He liked it. We, we killed a whole bottle of wine at lunchtime. Um, credit score guy has one itis now? I don't think so. Oh my God, it's like waiting on my weed dealer. That's why I keep four now. Yes, exactly, Ian. Exactly. I'm sure she wants to bang him regularly now. Probably. How to die through the process. Come to death. <laughs> Make it a Bible channel. This is Deacon Tom is in the building. Tom, God bless you, sir. God bless you. Um, bro, I'm about to send you something on Instagram right now. Thank you. Got it. Uh, Camden McInnes, what's up, bro? New man, I first time uh, you're writing in the chat, sir. Fornicating, lol. That dude sounds like he stones chicks for sleeping around. Jay Parker, what's up, bro? Good info. Without game, you fall for BPD broads. Yes, freelance Ronan, what up? Christian Martin says, do you believe that age slims down your options? I'm 26, about to be 27. I feel all the good women around me are either in a relationship or married. You have a scarcity mindset, my friend, and you don't have game. I love you. I understand you're going through pain right now, bro. But listen, you have to realize what you're – what, let me see if you're still in the chat real quick. Are you? Okay, you're still listening. Okay, so Christian, hear me out, bro. Your perception of dating is flawed. You do not have a full, concrete understanding of dating, relationships, and women, okay? You're so young. At 26, I had been with – It's I was like uh, – 26, I had been with – 70 women about at that time, okay? Now, number's way over 150. Way over, okay? 33. 33, okay? Fucking senior citizen in this game, baby. <laughs> and not even, actually. Just a joke because, dude, I know, dude, I'm coaching a guy right now. He's 45, okay? Had a couple coaching sessions with him. He went out the other day with a 19-year-old girl and on the first date fucked her. And, you know, he hit me up after that with a consultation. He's like, dude, I've never done that in my life. I'm like, you just never been taught by me. Okay. Uh, Joe from Proud Masculine, our dude, 42, running through hot girls. He's sending me photos of these girls. These girls are stunning. Stunning. Okay. Dude, you're 26 Okay, you're 16 years younger than Joe. You're seven years younger than me. If you take care of yourself with the big three, and you fucked up on one of them, I haven't seen you yet, but the big the big three make money, make muscles, learn game. You fucked up in the learn game section, and now here you are. But this breakup and her leaving you is a blessing in disguise. When I was 23, I had my heart fucking shattered. I was depressed as fuck. I lost weight. I was depressed for like three months straight, dude, um, by this chick named Alexandra. Played me like a fiddle. Did a good job. But that right there pushed me to seek understanding and really figuring out the whole dating thing. So you're asking yourself the question of today's title. Is learning how to date and sleep with many women worth it? Ask yourself now. Do you want to know more? Do you wish you knew more? Could you? Do you wish you could undo the past? Of course you do. But you can't. But what you can do, this pain has led you here. And pain, when acknowledged and accepted, can lead to understanding. And understanding brings wisdom. And wisdom brings you peace in life. So you're doing the right thing by showing up and looking for answers. And they're going to come. I'm telling you. You're on the Body Language Mastery course. I promise you I'll take care of you. Will it be easy? No. Will it be worth it? Absolutely. 
Uh, Christian, you are a man. You have until you're 30, says M. Garcia. Very true. Tom Thumble says, there are no good women. They just hide their slip better. Their slut better. Oof. Harsh truth there. Dude, it doesn't matter. If a girl likes you, she'll sleep with you on the first date. Doesn't matter. Christian women, Islamic women, whatever. They will. Christian men need to be careful. One of my dad's friends did the whole wait till marriage to fuck. And after they got bitch, the bitch told him. After they, he, wait. One of my friend's dad did the whole wait till marriage to fuck. And after they got married, the bitch told him she had HIV. What the fuck? That's crazy, dude. Oh. Muhammad says, I would settle, but depends on what they bring to my life. So far, no way worth settling for. Not that high value. Yeah, you say that now. Uh, no, Muhammad. Oh, we'll talk. We'll talk. Free Patriot. Hello, chat room. New listener here. What's up? Uh, Ivor says it right there. She's going to fuck so much. She is. Suck Nation. What's up, baby? Moan, how many girls do you think we should sleep with in order to fully realize their female nature or the quality matters? I would say if you can successfully sleep with 50 women, then you'll have above average competency for sure. Okay, 50, 30 to 50. I'll, I'll set the bar lower 30. 30 is like you're... You're like a low level, low level Jedi, right? Fifty is like okay, you're a Jedi master. You know, you got this thing sorted out. A hundred, I equate it like this, okay? When you have sex with one girl, it's like you're level one character. Two girls, level two. Three, level three. You get to hundred, you're pretty much maxed out. A hundred girls, you're level one hundred. You've got it all sorted out. But you can't just go through the empty motions of just like trying to have sex. You have to try to understand why is she doing this? Why did I fail on this date? Why did I succeed on this date? You know, you have to intric you have to look into the intricacies of dating. And it's so hard because there's no real school out there. There's no way to go and learn this. You have to like basically trust random strangers on the internet. And there's so many con artists out there that it's fucking crazy, crazy hard to get this sorted out. But hey, if you're watching me, congratulations, you lucked out. I got you. Okay, look at my testimonies. Look at all the dudes showing up to the chat. I deliver. Uh, Christian, so I will be getting into body language. Fucking money, bro. Awesome. Uh, beam me up, Jesus. <laughs> Red Morning Wood, what's up, dude? He's a strange cat, but his teachings the last six months on how, to, to, how the system works against all of us is spot on. How anyone handles that info is fine. He chose religion. You and I chose to bang house. I just chose to live life for me, man. And Roosh, you know, it, it is what it is. But, you know, I tried to watch Roosh twice, and he unnerved me both times. Yeah. It's just a different way of handling the knowledge. But he's right about alien control and dismantling Western civilization. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, Camden said, I almost gave up on trying to succeed in life because I thought the rapture was coming. Yikes. I definitely feel you on that one, dude. It ain't coming, so just work hard. You're good. Also, you don't love that Christian fear. At least being raised as Catholic, they don't shove that end down your throat. True story. No way to live. Yes. Michael Lee Jones had a great lesson on the recent video he did about why poop dick month bun, poop dick month is a big thing. Yeah, money. Money, 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 money. Uh, Clown World, what's up, bro? Good to see you in here. He says, I've traveled through Hungary, Poland, Ukraine, and Russia. I find it strange that Rush has lived in Eastern Europe for years and was not able to find a beautiful quality girl there you go you see you're smart clown world there you go come on guys come on all right if a fucking dude like me can lock down a nice girl come on a guy who sits in his fucking robe all day chilling out playing games and streaming on the internet come on it's possible i could go back to the states and and get, i had women in the states too it's just that I just don't, you know what it is? The problem with American women is like they don't know how to be, they don't, they don't know how to be feminine, okay? Like they're, like a feminine girl is super rare and they get wifed up real quick. So I just don't like that. Or I, that's why I came out here. Dude, go to Vietnam, go to fucking Ukraine, go to Taiwan, go, hell, even go to Korea, go to China, go to Japan, go to Colombia, okay? Go to Barbados, go to anywhere in South America. You can find beautiful feminine women and if you have some relative game you can you can you can have success but the fact that Rouge could not find a keeper after living in Poland and Ukraine 
that, that come on, guys, common sense. Common sense, guys. Common sense. Something wrong with him. Being raised in the Black Baptist Church, it's fire and brimstone. Absolutely, freelance. What Roosh is doing by keeping his books and website is what I call religious hypocrisy or the halal haram ratio. Yes. Never watch Roosh. You're better off. Mr. Super, what's up? Better learn crypto while eating steak or should I learn steak while eating crypto? First one. Uh, it's okay. Moan says, it's okay if you haven't had success in 20s. Be patient. Yeah, you got to try. That's a big part too is trying. Oh, what's up, Joe? <laughs> uh, Gob C, what's your opinion about the Orlando dating market? I think it's shit. That's why I left. Um, I think it's shit. Orlando used to be a good spot. Now it's garbage. Um, and I, when I came back in 2016, I realized that. Um, let's see, 20, 20 kilos. Jeez, that's some tiger shit. I love me my steaks, brother. Mooless, yo, what up, brother? Just out of curiosity, can you speak your girl's language? If not, do you care to learn eventually? Uh, she speaks English. I met her in English school. Her English is her her actual English is really good. Um, I speak Japanese. I speak very. My listening is the best in Japanese. Um, I can read hiragana. I can read katakana. I can read some kanji. My speaking, it's okay. I can communicate, but it's not as good as I want it to be. I've never I've never been to lessons, though. Everything I've learned is through cultural absorption and personal study, which is like <laughs> less than 10 hours. I didn't even finish Rosetta Stone. But I watch a lot of anime, and um, you, know, you live in Japan. You hear it every day. I learned a lot from all the kids I was teaching. They teach, you know, they speak very elementary Japanese, so I can pick it up quickly. Can we add an amen to chat for Red Pill Jesus here? Yes. Moo, you make her learn your language. Yes. Just don't bring foreign women back to the States. Feminism will begin to infect her. Yep. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Gobsy, get out, bro. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Just get out. Trust me, dude. You'll be happier. Orlando's got some weird stuff. Orlando was voted one of the angriest cities. And honestly, dude, fucking Buddy Dyer sucks, man. Buddy Dyer is a shit maver of shit shit mayor orlando has been going to shit under his watch he's been he's been running uncontested i've been thinking about running for mayor just to get him out of there because i i've honestly and that's another thing like learning how to date and sleep with many women it's crazy like every goal that i've set i've been able to achieve it like every single goal it may have taken time but through persistence discipline and consistently taking action you can do anything you may not think that's true right now because maybe you never tried or maybe you haven't tried long enough. But that's the truth. And literally, I've gotten to the point that I think, like, really, I think I could win some political office. Hell, if that, if that fucking retard, uh, Alexandra Ocasio or Cortez or whatever, if she can become a member of the government, I think she's like a congresswoman or a senator or something, whatever the hell she is. Dude, I really honestly think I can win. I truly think I can win. So, um, but yeah, Buddy Dyer is running Orlando into the ground. Um, so yeah, get out, man. Get out. Get the fuck out. Take action. Get the fuck out. If it sucks, leave. If you're not happy, change. If you don't like your job, start looking for other jobs. Quit. Get the fuck out. Are you fat shit? You hate your life? Fuck it. Stop eating. Start fasting. Go to the gym. Don't give up, okay? Bottom line is this. If your problems suck and you don't want to fucking charge them, uh, change them, then that means you don't want it bad enough. That's it. Pure, pure. Period. Period. If you're a fat fucker and you want to lose weight, guess what? You're not. If you don't want to, if, if you're a fat fucker, you don't want to go to the gym, diet, whatever, you don't want it bad enough, okay? If you want to learn your dating and get this dating stuff figured out, you're going to learn to figure it out. Stop jacking off. Stop looking at porn, okay? That's a huge thing right there. But if you don't, if you think, okay, I'm just going to jerk off, look at porn, whatever, then guess what? You're not going to get it figured out. If you want something, You'll go for it. If you don't want something, you'll make excuses. That's the bottom line. Leonardo says, uh, Leonardo, what's up, buddy? He says, if you want feminine girls with stunning bodies, come to Brazil. You know, if you know game, you can easily become a pin, especially if you're American. Oh, buddy, I know. I've dated, I have had a few Brazilian girlfriends in the past. Um, I love how, I love how jealous Brazilian girls get. That, that gets me really turned on. What really, what really fucking gets me super super turned on is like when two girls fight over me i love it I'm like yeah i want to i want to give them both knives and be like just have at it ladies <laughs> you know let's have some tryouts here uh scrubby turd says 
<laughs> Lou with the with the uh, uh, AOC joke, occasional cortex. Scruffy Turd says, I've always wanted to drop everything and try out Japan, but I really don't have yellow fever, but everything out there sounds fine. Then do it. What are you going to do? Wait till you're 50 and like you have, you're fucking, you have a kid or, you know, you have all your life behind you. You know, dude, do it now. Do it now. Just do it. Just fucking do it. There's nothing holding you back other than the bullshit limitations in your mind. That's it. So just do it. The scariest part, and I always say this to you guys, the scariest part about this life is not that your dreams can come true or can't come true. The scariest part of this life is that your dreams can come true, and if they don't, it's your fault. That's masculinity 101 right there for you. So do it. Stop being a little bitch. Stop sitting there and guess, second-guessing yourself, and just do it. You want to run a fucking mar- marathon? Do it, okay? How to get yellow fever? Why do you need yellow fever? Just come here. Japanese girls are hot. There's beautiful women everywhere. There's a reason I stay home so much, man. It drives me nuts to fucking get out there. There's beautiful girls everywhere. I go to, I go to the grocery store just to like buy some a bag of chicken, and I'm just like, God damn, this beautiful-ass girl riding by me on her bicycle, Right? There you go. Lou says right there, take it from me, guys. I'm 50 years old starting now. But And, and Lou is a is a, clo- a coaching client of mine. And he's the guy, he in the chat there, Louis Piazza, he's the guy that I've been coaching with his career. And he has already has a huge uh, salary jump on the table and an even larger salary jump potentially coming from two different companies with uh, with one offer letter for the position already there. And he's making changes. He's lost like over 20 pounds since we've been coaching. Like, And he's turning his life around to 50. But if you're younger than him, there's no fucking excuse. There's no excuse. Do it. And if you don't do it, you have to make peace in your heart. Know that you're being a little bitch. Okay? You're shying away. You're afraid of risk. You're afraid of change. You're too fucking comfortable. That is the big thing right there. And again... This is why I am a huge advocate of learning how to date and sleep with many women because eventually, once you learn to master this skill, you have more choice in life and it opens your life and your mind. You think, hey, I, I didn't want to date this bitch. I dumped her and I went out and I got a whole variety of girls. Then you start looking at your job. You're like, hey, you know what? I don't like the way this boss talks to me. I don't like this low salary. I've got this game sorted out. What if I, what if I just tried the same situation with, with trying to get my money sorted out? And then same thing with your fitness. It's all connected, and it all starts with you taking action. That's it. We're going an hour and a half, guys. Thank you so much. To, I'm, I'm going to go, but thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all. You guys are awesome. So amazing that you guys showing up here. 80 people watching, uh, 57 likes. Please click that like button before you go. Now 81. Good Lord. Numbers just going up through the sky. Um, guys, 10 days from now, Body Language Mastery is going live. Only five days to enroll. After this quarter, the price goes up to four ninety seven. Get in now. Now is the time to take action. If you found if if things that I was saying were resounding with you now, okay. If you if you feel like you need that additional push, that additional guidance, I mean, look it up. Pull up all the psychological studies you want. Mentorship cuts the path to growth. You get there super quick, super quick, way quicker than you will on your own. Okay. Get in, um, get in a group of guys that are help change your life. Get into a group that will give you accountability. Do the whole nine yards. What do you have to lose? If you're unhappy, if you're not happy where you are right now, take action and move forward in life. That's what I got to say. Other than that, I got nothing else. Tune in tomorrow for the Tokyo Crypto Show with me and Cultivate Crypto. And um, it's going to be... Like I said, it's going to just be an awesome show. We're going to talk about all the money and all the stuff. I'll tell you, there's guys in the Body Language Mastery course that we have a lot of crypto heavy hitters behind the scenes. Um, and again, if you want to join in, go ahead and click on this link right here. Uh, modernlifedating.com forward slash body language. Scroll down, click on this link right here. And then click on the email address box right here. Enter your best email address. Just enter one. And you will be put on the waiting list and you'll get the notifications once we are ready to go. And until then, thank you guys all for listening. 
Oh, speak of the speak of crypto. There's the there's the crypto dog himself, Molotov Cocktail. What's up, my man? Um, that's gonna do it, guys. So thank you guys all for listening. You guys are awesome. Um, I hope I didn't hurt any feelings. And if I did, you just need to toughen up. I just gave it to you straight. If a guy like me coming from fucking poverty, living in a fucking car with my mom, my brother, and my sister, no dad, no money, no hope. Just fucking mom grinding, trying to figure it out, okay? If I can do it, you can do it too, all right? And that's just the bottom line. Coming from a terrible childhood, all that crazy stuff, you know, it is totally possible for you. The only limitations you have are the ones in your mind. That's the bottom line. Everything in this life is mindset. Everything in this life is psychology. Once you get your mind figured out and mastered, nothing can stop you. All right. That'll do it. Tell that, boys. Much love. See you later. Peace.